Welcome one, welcome all one more time here on your wonderful show, Sankofa, looking backwards at the future, and here we are. Your host is Maponga J. My guest for tonight is Mfundisi, Mfundisi Makado, Situmule, Ramabulane, and what we are and what we are dealing with today has been a hot subject. We have been running around, picking up ideas and uh, having conversations with uh, other pastors, other religious leaders. If you remember very well in some of the shows that we've handled, when Pastor Israel was here, Ashom was here, and when uh, Piri was here, Muyema was here. Another few, you know, the other professor also from, from UNISA who came to talk to us. This issue kept on cropping in in the backgrounds and etc. And we did not have a full ep episode where we would actually maybe begin to have a full conversation uh, in this uh, occultism and occult and uh, the misbehavior of our uh, Christian pastors and ministers, particularly when it comes to tempering with uh, membership and using witchcraft, using magic, using mutis, using omens talismans and, and things of the various nature all in the name of jesus and all of it is covered because you want to achieve something in the church and to, to, to you want to get more money in the church you want people to listen to you on power and things of that nature and we as a christian church we, uh, we, they, it's, it's difficult we cannot keep quiet because these things are happening and i know many of the christians christians out there would write me, would SMS me, and uh, some of them are quite angry because they think you are destroying the body of Christ. You have become a devil, you have become a satanist. You are someone even wrote candidly and say you are a devil incarnate. You are actually sent by the devil himself. And I said, no, the devil is the one who is taking your money. The devil is the one who is robbing you. So don't, don't come to me. Information can never be evil. Collect what is good, apply your mind to information and facts, go back and do your research, Find out how can it be possible that an educated teacher who is a headmaster can walk into a church and they lose all sense of sanity, sell their house and take that entire money and give it to their pastor and they go and live on the street. And the pastor is happy to have such experiences. These things are happening. Pastors sleeping with young girls in churches, pastors traveling far and wide on the faces of Africa and beyond, looking for power to do certain things. And tonight I thought I would treat you uh, to a very special guest, um, Fundis uh, Makado, Ramabulani, who has a very interesting experience that he must be sharing with us. I, I really want to get to the bottom of this, and I want to hear, is this really happening? Is it true, these things that we are seeing? In South African space here, we've seen people drinking petrol, We've seen people being driven over by cars in the church in the name of the Lord. We've seen pastors fondling women in churches, for example. We've seen and heard people eating grass and uh, people resurrecting each other from the dead, for example. And, and the list goes on and on and on. But this whole issue of miracles in churches has occupied the great months the great minds of the people. And we're still, even now while we are talking, Papa from South Africa has um, disappeared into Malawi mm. due, due to some investigations that are taking place. Uh, that is Prophet Bushiri himself. And we, we have a problem because the biblical text itself, mm. it is founded on a miracle-based God. Mm. God who performs miracles. miracles. God who opens up the sea. God who strikes rocks and water comes out. Mm -hmm. God who is a cloud by day, you shout fire up, by night. fire comes out, Elijah is you know, eaten up, mm. Jesus appears, does not make it easier for us. Mm. Then he starts walking on the water. The other pastor tried to walk on the water the other day, Head was eaten by crocodiles and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, some are trying to break bread and etc. Yeah. But it looks like this God has everything mm. except money. Mm. Except money. Mm. He has everything in the world. He has a whole world in his hands. Mm. But there's one thing God does not have. Mm. And it is money. Mm. And then pastors who are coming into the space, mm. they want access to means and mm. access to money. And mm. in the pursuit of this monetary value, monetary value mm. pastors have, have, people. have gone to, to length yes. to do yes. what they have done. Mm. And here with me is the Pastor Rabulani, yeah. a man of experience. Mm. And I don't want to interrupt him much. He is going to share with us his experience, mm. where he started, how he moved, to where he is now. Mm. And when he's looking back now mm. as a, a senior pastor mm. in the reflection of mm. what has happened, what possible advice can he be giving to us as an African continent mm. and to you as members out there 
And to you also, some of you as young pastors, yes. and even some of you as practicing pastors, mm. who are now noticing things are not moving as fast, and you're getting tempted to step to the left and to the right. So please, open up your minds. Even to the charlatans. Uh, Those who are doing this. That's a new yeah. word that yeah. has become very popular during <laughs> Corona. I started hearing charlatans, charlatans. <laughs> Let's go to town. Why, who is Pastor Rabulan and where is he coming from? Give us a small little background about yes. your history, and we'll move towards the subject of the day today. Thank you so much, Bishop Maponga. I, I, I honor this uh, invitation and uh, I'm so privileged to be here. When we talk about Apostle Makado, we, we, we just talk about a son of the soil, uh, an ordinary boy who grew up in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I grew up from a, a Christian family. Both my parents are, are pastors, mm -hmm. but when I grew up, my father has been in the ministry full time. Mm -hmm. My mother, she was, she was working by then, working in a local shop. Mm -hmm. Now, growing up in that context, I had to stay with my grandmother mm -hmm. because of finances were not okay. You mm -hmm. remember during those times when people were giving offering mm -hmm. as a pastor, Mm. they will use a, a, a side plate a small side plate a, a saucer. yeah a saucer yeah mm. just like and this they drop some coins. A, and they drop some coins it's, so in, it's interesting <laughs> to see how the offering plate has grown <laughs> from a saucer I went to one church the yes. black buckets they bring back oh, no the ones for rubbish <laughs> yeah those black ones really yes the real big one uh -huh. and it was full uh, yes yeah so that's that's uh, the background so I I had to to stay with my grandmother, and my grandmother, she was a prophetess. Mm -hmm. She was attending a, a, a African indigenous churches, the, the, the postola, you know this one, the blue and white. So, yes, the, so I, the I, clippy clippies. Yeah, the clippy clippies, yeah. yes. So, so as I was a young boy, I could see people flocking into my grandmother's house for consultation. Mm. People will come for spiritual bath, people will come for prophecy. We attended all night prayers where, where the spirit will move, people will fall down. So I grew up in that context. And I remember I said to my mother, one day I said, you know what, I saw people coming and my grandmother was holding a chicken and the slaughtered the blood of the chicken, mix it with the water. So people were bathing. So I was asking my mother, when is she coming to take a bath like that? Uh -huh. So my mother asking said, your mother now. yeah, I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, what are you? Hey, yes. We don't go to go. He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, that's, what my, uh, that's what made my parents say, no, you know what, this young man has to come and, he's and stay with us. He's Yeah, getting, he's getting confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had to relocate, stay with them, readjust, go to Sunday school, carry a Bible, put on a, 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 a tie. You know a pastor's kid, mm. they will put a tie uh, at a very small age. And a long jacket. And a long jacket yeah. and a big Bible. By the way, I grew up like that also. Don't say, Bishop. My father used to take me and put me on a table mm. to recite memory verses. Yes, so with I, a tie. With a tie. And, and, and he, a long he, jacket. He would borrow me his tie. Yes. And a long jacket. Then they would fold it like this. Then they put me on a chair. And I would start reciting. <laughs> Maybe that's how I started to become a pastor. Also, yeah, at yeah. At a very early age. Yes. So... Uh, as I was growing up there, people would call me small pastor because of uh, the influence of the family. You know, family influence is very important. Mm -hmm. How you see your father praying. I remember the other night, it was an all night prayer. Uh, my, my mother, she was kneeling down on a chair, praying, folding her arms like this. And I, I found myself doing the very same thing. Mm -hmm. After a church service, we'll go to the microphones where the preacher was holding. Me and my younger brother will imitate the, the, the preachers. Parents. Yeah, the parents uh, uh, move around with the microphone. Making a call to the chairs. <laughs> Empty chairs. <laughs> Practicing. Practicing. Yeah. And, and this influenced me where uh, even in my bedroom as I was growing up, I will take a, a you know, a roll on. Uh, I will <laughs> use it as a microphone. <laughs> but you need it to be holding something. Yeah, I, will, yeah, I wanted something to hold. So I I will start doing that, believing that uh, I've got a call. Mm -hmm. And it came to a, a stage where I shared the vision because every time, most of the time, I would see myself preaching. Maybe it's because of the influence, but it started to affect my, my, my dreams. I would see myself preaching the love of ministry. So I told my parents and said, you know what, this is what is happening in my life. Then they said, if it's a call of God, it will show up. Mm. Just continue. I, I continued. Uh, I was very popular in uh, the small township where we come from. Mm. And there was a time where I decided to, uh, to accept Jesus Christ. And I, I, I raised my hand uh, and I raised my both hands and I, I followed my father to accept Jesus. Mm. 
So uh, I have accepted Jesus, Bishop. Mm. Jesus lives in my heart, Bishop. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> At least your father did it for you. Yes, okay. yes. So after I've accepted Jesus, that I was doing my matric by then. Then I, I came to Pretoria Tech. It was Pretoria Tech by then to enroll for HR, Human Resource. Mm. Then uh, I studied for one year. Then the following year, I felt I wanted to go to the Bible College. And I, I yeah, I short diverted. Left. I sharp a short left. Uh -huh. I went to Soshanguve. I, I, I stayed there for about three years. Mm. And when I got to the Bible College, you know, you, when you go to Bible College, you've got this picture of, of thinking that in Bible College you find holiness. You find God there. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah you've got this thing and say, no, in, in, in the Bible College you find God there. Mm -hmm. uh, guess what, Bishop? Yeah. Yeah, it was another it was thing. Character. Yeah. You meet different kind of character. Yeah. That is the reason you can go to a Bible college, but that does not make you a, a pastor. Mm. To be a pastor, it has to be from the heart. Mm. So while I was at the Bible college, mm. there were a lot of challenges as a, a teenager. You, you have to sharpen your character. But I thank God for the apostolic faith mission. They mm. taught us quality doctrine they they taught us how to be a community leader mm. because one thing in the bible college they won't teach you how to prophesy people mm. but i thought that was what i was gonna get i thought that that's what i, I was gonna get the power you know mm. this power where you love to demonstrate coming from a charismatic movement where if you attend a revival of a guest speaker who comes and pray for an empty chair and he says whosoever touches the empty chair will fall down i mean i, I could see that and i thought that was coming from the bible college mm. so we prayed in the chapel all night looking for power shouting god where are you and power did not come power did not come bishop. <laughs> power did not come bishop okay yes then from then i i finished graduated then after graduating i felt let me start a church mm. Because I come from a, a family, everybody thought that I will go back and submit under my father. Mm. But I realized and said, you know what, L let me go and have my own experience mm. of the field. I don't want to, to sit down under what my father has worked for himself. Mm. I don't see my success in his shadow. Mm. I wanted to stand for what God has called me for. Mm. I went to Pretoria, uh, Bishop. Mm. Uh, I stayed in Pretoria CBD and we hired a, a hall there. Then we started to, to recruit people. You know, when you start a church, usually you'll go to people who know you mm. so that you can cast the vision with them. This is what I have. I went mm. to different families, especially those we come with from mm. Limpopo. Mm. I thought it would be easy for them to support. Mm. So once we started uh, the church, others started to, to move, to withdraw. They felt, no, they can't be associated with this. But, but by that time, I was fresh from the Bible college. Mm. So the church uh, started to, to, to attract uh, some few people. And uh, it, it was growing, but not the That's way yeah, yeah. I was expecting. Mm. Because I thought to, to grow a church, actually, I thought having a church is to have multiple uh, multitude of people. Mm. I, I was looking at the numbers. And the man, ma numbers must translate into money. Into money, yes. You understand? So people were not coming. People were not tithing. Uh, uh, but I was surviving. I was surviving. But so, not to your expectation. Yeah, not to my expectation. Because when I look around, I see these prophets, these big guys, who, who are really making it. So I decided to do multiple revival, thinking that uh, the revival will bring the impact. Uh, I, I, I did not know that God is the one that adds people in a church mm. on a season. Mm. God will not bring people if you are immature. Mm. God will not bring people to lead them astray. Mm. So, so I wanted the crowd, mm. but where will I take them? Mm. So I, I called people to come. This is prophets who were doing miracles. I was associated with them with one intention i wanted what they have mm. and i looked down on what i had mm. so i was not satisfied with only preaching bishop because you know when you preach only people shout amen you don't see them falling down then you you doubt whether you are fully called you're called yeah or you called yourself they say many are called but a few are frozen yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll be coming back right after the break we want to hear all about the story of pastor Ramabulane here as he's pursuing the ministry and how his journey mm. led him far and wide from Ghana to Nigeria mm. looking for power, power and <laughs> money. Don't go away. We'll be back right after the break. Make massive moves.
The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object in space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teams are primed and ready. They got the first animal in space and they got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make messy moves with Starset. Make massive moves. How can you say that? That is what it is. Your mother eloped with someone else. I just think this is such a genius idea. I think it's amazing. I can be happy. It's inside you. It's inside of all of us. It's about cooking smart, that are nutritious and delicious. President Trump acknowledging the coronavirus death toll could be significantly higher. You don't want to do this. There is nothing you can take. Jerusalem. <laughs> Surviving roommates scared. The heavyweights arrive. Inside finds Petrulia blocked by Jane. This is the will of God. Make messy moves with Star's Head. There you have it. Welcome back. Pastor Ramabulani opens up a small church in Pretoria, tries to look for membership, and the church is not growing as fast as he wanted it to grow. Yeah. Bigger boys are doing it, and they're making it town. You, Masakela, the boy is doing it, and you are not doing it. It's not coming through. Yeah. What did that lead you to? It's not happening. Mm. It brought pleasure uh, because as a young pastor, you know, you look around. Uh, on how other young ministers are, are making it in the field and mm. we we look at ma material success mm. as one way that describes that you are you are really called mm. i mean uh, i did not believe that i'm called to struggle we we i remember on our third year uh, most of the pastors when they spoke about their vision you could hear in their language that they were looking for mega churches mm. we we had this thing a in our mind i think we were destroyed by what we see on television mm. this american gospel that mm. came with prosperity uh, mega churches you know uh, in the olden days a pastor will stand on the pulpit stationary but when this american gospel came you move around you, you understand like you are in power a bit of english yeah and, uh, a bit of english swag, there and there some keyboards yeah. and everything else yeah with the keyboard creating, background yeah, yeah, yeah the, the shouting is, there the spirit is here now i feel it now <laughs> so return so, to sender yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so that's 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 the picture of of church that i had in mind and i was so impatient so when these guys who were moving around they did not have a church mm. but they moved around in towns mm. doing the crusade tents collecting stuff, money yeah. tents mm. and i remember i attended one tent where they they spoke and they preached because they used their charisma their gift mm. to attract people and once people are attracted by your gift they take your pocket mm. they 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 tell you to search your pocket i remember we attended one crusade where people were forced to give whatever they had as in money and now it came to the watches take off your watches it was like a day robbery take off your watches cell phone take it out take your sim card now i was watching put everything here put everything here your shoes now god wants your Aye, shoes man. bishop People were taking their expensive shoes, take off your wig to, to women, Brazilian hair, yeah, take every, Bishop, I, I saw that. And to me, I thought this is the power of God. What makes this congregation to, to give like this, this must be God. And the pastor collected everything, put it in the kaboot. And uh, we went and he said that was a successful crusade not counting how many souls accepted jesus mm -hmm. but he was counting how many how, yeah how many weeks he collected how many envelopes he collected how many, watches? how many watches he collected how many cell phones he collected so i was so impressed mm -hmm. then i i said i need this kind of of power mm -hmm. and uh, uh, by association i was with them they started to trust me because i will organize girls for them you know what are you saying now Yes, Bishop. This, what are you saying now? Yes, Bishop. These pastors, before before they can pitch a, a tent a, in a location, mm. they they have to have girlfriends there. After the pulpit, mm. where they stay in a in a hotel or a motel or a guest house, mm. 
there are girls that will transport after the, the crusade, after the service, mm. for the pastor to have a good time because they, they were addicted in, in, in sex and not just sex, they will sleep as in, in orgy where you find multiple people having sex in one room mm. and the following day they will go and, and minister and preach. So I was, I was introduced in, into that kind of world. And you became a pimp. Basically, because you are the one organizing the girls. <laughs> Bishop. I mean, polite, I'm saying so. Yeah, no, politely. Yeah, you know, nearly, nearly. Literally. You, yeah, no. You, you need, you, because you also want success. You, yes. And if this is what happens, yes. successful, yes. you as a young pastor, you found yourself in that space. And w what shocked me was their lifestyle did not correspond with what they were preaching. Mm. They were very powerful in the pulpit, but their lifestyle was very corrupt. Mm. And by being faithful in saving them, that is when they started to reveal and say, we can connect you to get power so that your church can grow. Mm -hmm. So I started to inquire more about this particular power. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you can look at how this system operates, you find that somebody who is a keyboardist. Keyboard to, player. Yeah, yeah, a keyboard player mm -hmm. today, moving with them in a tent. After two years, the keyboard players now become a prophet somewhere. Now, it, it is because they take you, they train you as you are part of the team. You have a, a, a thinking that tomorrow I will also pastor my own church. Mm. So by saving them. Initiated. Yeah. By saving them, it was a, a walkthrough to be, to be initiated. Mm. Now, they told me that I have to go to Nigeria. But before then, they gave me certain things to use in the local church, mm. the black soap. And they said that with the black soap, every Saturday night before you go to church, you should, uh, you should start uh, washing it on your, uh, on your crown. Mm. Yes. And you speak whatever that you want. And by so doing, whatever you say, it will happen. And I used it one night on a Saturday, and I said, you know what, I want when I come to church to have authority. Mm. You know, as a young pastor, that is the reason you see a lot of young ministers. Mm. They've got so much authority to an old woman or an old person who is an educated person. But when he speaks, everybody just bows. It is because of the spiritual power the person possesses. Mm. So I started to use uh, those things, and I, I, I could feel change, Bishop. Mm. When I enter, when I talk, uh, people will listen to me and they will agree, say yes, yes, mm. yes. Now, I wanted more. The time came and I the, said... The soap was not enough. The soap was not enough because it was getting finished. But you, you, you felt the, there should be something more than just the yeah, soap. Yeah, I felt, no, yeah, there's something, but I want more. Okay. Because in my mind, I did not want something that I can use, it can get finished. Mm. I said, you know what, I, I, I want to have the engine of power mm. in, in my own house. That is the difference with those who go and get oils mm. and those who are making the oils. Mm. So I wanted that level of making things. Mm. So I traveled. I went to uh, Nigeria. When we, we arrived there, we find an old man. He, he, would you by yourself or some senior pastors? No, uh, yeah, the, the senior same pastor. crew. The same crew. Yeah, the same crew. Because you can't Are they go still by, in ministry, these guys? Yeah, they're still in ministry. They've been sending me messages. They've been threatening me. Yeah, they're still in ministry. They said, because you are tired why do you expose this? Mm. And I said, you know what? This is part of my rehabilitation. Mm. This is part of my own deliverance. I have mm. to say this uh, so that God can totally deliver me. Mm. We arrived in Nigeria, Bishop. Uh, when we arrived in Nigeria, it was my first time. Uh, I went to Nigeria. We went Lagos. to Lagos, mm. the airport, very hot. When you land there, it's very hot. Mm. That place, people were shouting. You know Nigeria. Yeah. If, even now, e even if it's late, pe people are busy moving in Lagos. It's up and down. Doesn't we, sleep Lagos. Yeah. We, we, we ride, we took uh, the Okada. But when we arrived, we took a private cab. And the small boys were there uh, shouting, pure water. They are selling pure water, pure water. Mm -hmm. Or oh, it's just crazy, Lagos, just crazy. And when we came to our guest house, we were welcomed. And I told them that I'm from South Africa and I'm a pastor. And they just looked on at each other and say, we, we know you are here for power. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like it's normal for them to mm -hmm. see foreign pastors come in there. And for one purpose, when you see a lot of pastors flocking to these Western countries, mm -hmm. uh, I'm telling you, there's something that they are getting there, mm -hmm. which they are not getting here in South Africa. <laughs> so once we're there, the following morning, we, we drove to the village. And we met one man, 
he, he uses it's, it's called ifa ifa yeah it's ifa. ifa yeah ifa, ifa yeah. yeah okay bishop yes, yes. yes. yeah it's ifa it's different from our own our own tra uh, traditional doctors how they, they do consulting mm. usually you'll go locally they throw bones down mm. so there they don't throw bones it just took it, it it's a board a board and uh, there are two ways. Uh, it's either it's a board with sand, and you will just draw the lines like this. Mm. When you draw the lines, you'll be able to look at the board, and it will predict you. It will tell you things. From the board. Yeah, from the board. Then the other one is like it's a chain with some uh, cowries. cowries. Mm. Then you just throw that chain there, and you will be able to predict. So he did those two. He was saying that he was checking my star whether uh, what I want is aligned yeah, with what, are. yeah, with mm -hmm. who I am. So he checked my star and he predicted, he gave me accurate prediction that mm -hmm. I come from a family uh, and I'm the firstborn. He, he gave me good prediction and when I looked at this old man and in my mind I said, if this man can carry a Bible, put on a suit, with a Bible and they come to South Africa, you, you will pass the very big church. He will beat, he will beat all of you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because of his, his level of accuracy. Who is excited to hear their, their own history from a foreign man? Yeah, I, I mean, me. I was shocked. Before this thing can be popular in South Africa, it, it heated me in Nigeria. Mm. That's the reason I, I know how they, they do these things. Mm. They, these pastors, they take your name during the week and they go and consult to, traditional, yeah, to traditional doctors. Mm. They, they take a list, go and consult, get information, come and present it to you as a prophecy on Sunday mm. on the pulpit. So they have inquired a lot about you. Mm. And uh, when we finished there, he said that uh, what I want, I must meet the, the witches that are controlling the world. Mm. And uh, you know, uh, Bishop Maponga, I, I grew up on the street. I'm streetwise. Mm. Uh, I know if this is a scam. Mm. And I know if this is, is real. So I wanted to, to, to check if this is real. I said, it's fine. You can call the witches. Then uh, we organized, you organized that no, uh, at night uh, I should come because I was staying closer. Uh, at night we came. You know what, Bishop? We were in a room like this. You enter. There was nobody, literally. Then after entering, they said, I must move out. They gave me the key. They locked. I stood there. After some time, they said, no. Come in. Yeah, the witches have accepted you. Come in. Bishop, when I came in. Back into the room. Yeah. It's, it's a room like this. It's closed. It's wall. And you could see. There's just fire there, candles. When I came in, Bishop, I saw old people with, with white hair, wearing white, like white clothes. There were many, about 12, seated there. I don't know where they came, how, how they, they came, because they gave me a key and said, you sit there. Now, when they came, they said, these are the witches that controls the world. They are called white witches. Mm. Said, uh, in the witches fraternity, there are two groups. There's the black witches mm. and there's the white witches. Now, the black witches are the ones that are punishing people like uh, accident, like all those sickness. Mm. Now the white witches are the ones who are able to communicate with the black witches mm. so that the black witches can remove the curse from the person. Mm. So no, what you want as a pastor, you will use the power of the white witches. Mm. Now they, they educated me on that. Mm. Now, when they gave me a message about this, this is Nigeria. When they gave me a message about these white witches, what they want, it was too expensive. Mm. I, they wanted a lot of things, a lot of things. And I felt, you know what, I can't afford this. Mm. What were they demanding for? I, uh, they don't give you a price. But they, they give you, like, they need the heart of, 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 of camels, 12 heart of camels, uh, 3 heart of, of lions. You, they spoke those things. Now, when you sit down and you calculate where are you going to get those things, then they'll tell you, no, there's a market here. We'll calculate according to our market here where you can get those things. They're available. Yeah, they're available. You just bring your money. You just bring your money. So when they calculate, it was a, a huge amount, uh, uh, Bishop. Then I said, uh, that I said I don't have this because of the number of the things that uh, they were requiring. Mm. Then they said, okay, it's fine. We can also give you what, what we call uh, the money ritual. Mm. 
because mm -hmm. you don't have money, we can give you money. Return. We can create the money. Yeah. Then you come and meet up the obligations. Yes. Later. They said we can give you a money ritual now. Then I said, what is money ritual? They say you call it miracle money. A lot of pastors they have this thing. It's called miracle money, but here we call it the money ritual. Then I, I, I said to them, yeah, can you do this man ritual? Uh, because <laughs> when I came, they said I must bring a big bag. You know, this, uh, we call it Ghana must go. In, in their language, they call it Ghana must go. Mm. Here in South Africa, it's Machangani mm -hmm. bag. Yeah. yeah, the big said, bring it. We're going to bless you with something to take home. Now, we went to another room. There's a, it's, it's a traditional pot, big like this. Hold it right there. Hearts of lions, hearts of camels, mashangani bags, and everything else. White witches appearing in a room. The man is looking for power, a pastor of the Christian church on his journey. Yeah, this is also Shuba. Let's hear more from Pastor Ramabulani. What happened when he entered the other room and there was a big bucket there? Don't go away. Make massive moves. How can you say that? That is what it is. eloped with someone else. I just think this is such a genius idea. I think it's amazing. I can be happy. It's inside you. It's inside of all of us. It's about cooking smart, that are nutritious and delicious. President Trump acknowledging the coronavirus death toll could be significantly higher. We don't want to do this. There is nothing you can take. Jerusalem. <laughs> Surviving roommates scared. The heavyweights arrive. Inside finds Petrulia blocked by Jane. This is the will of God. Make messy moves with Stars Head. Make massive moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen. I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. What else is this if not love? Make messy moves with Stars Head. Boom! Pastor Rama Bulani gets a shock of his life. He walks in a room and finds the room is full of people that he did not live there. And then they were going to give you a money ritual. Yes. Here you are now with a big bag. Ghana must go, a mashangani bag. Mm. What, was, what were you supposed to put in that bag? In the bag, they promised that I would put the money that the spirits uh, will give me. So you carry the bag with you. It's still empty by then. Yeah, it's still empty. Now we are going But this to is the amount of money you're going to be carrying. Yes. They told me that you must bring uh, the biggest bag that you can. That because, you can find. Yeah. The, the spirits will give you money. Wow. So that you should use that money. I believe that. And we, now we went to this room. It's, it's, it's locked also, locked. Small room with traditional pot, big traditional. You know, the clay, the, the pots that are made with clay, yeah. big ones. Mm -hmm. Now, they took uh, something that looked like powder, and there was a small window there. They took something like powder and put it there, and they speak their incantation. Speak their incantation, speak their incantation. Then they said I should close the... Uh, uh, before I could close the door, I must cover with a white uh, cloth. Uh, cloth. Mm -hmm. Must cover those pot with a white cloth. I cover it with a white cloth. Then they said, I must move out. And re remember, when you enter those rooms, you knock three times. You mm. don't just, there's some principles. You, mm. you knock three times. Then after knocking, you enter by reverse. You, you don't enter looking. You enter like backwards. Mm. Yeah, that's what I did. Then from then, I closed there. Then after closing, uh, I stayed at the door because they said, you must stay here. Mm. After some time, they said, now the spirits have, have uh, uh, accepted your your prayers mm -hmm. go there open i unlocked bishop when i opened that door those pots three of them they were full to capacity with money fresh money if somebody could have brought that money i could have seen him passing by or if he brought it by window but it's a small window nobody can enter there full of money then I looked, and it, it's not uh, a Nigerian re, a, a dollar. U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars, South African dollars, I mean, South African rents. 
Now, they just open small, like open it and you see it. Then I'm so excited. And I said, I, can I take this? He said, no, you can't. This money must be cleansed. If you can take it like this, it will be a problem to your family. Mm. It, it, it will start to kill people. Mm. Now, they said, this money must be cleansed. Okay, cleansed how? You need to do, to do some rituals for mm. you to, to clean this money. Mm. Now I'm confused, Bishop. Two things. I saw those witches. Now this is money and I can't afford. You understand? The money they're looking for, but here is it. Yeah, here is the money. But in my mind, I said, no, man. If these people are looking for money, what? why can't they just take this money mm. and use it? They said, no, we can't use this money. It, you, it must be cleansed. Now, I said to them, what must I do now? They said, no, if you don't afford all this, then you must join, like to be part of the family. Mm. Then to join, uh, what is it that is needed? To join, you, you need a, a goat, a chicken. They do all those rituals for you to be part of the family. Mm. Now, once you have joined, you are part of the secret society. Mm. Now, when you are part of the secret society, there will be some benefits that you will get there, mm. and you'll also have to be loyal to them by mm. sending money that you are making wherever you are. Yes, yes. So that's... So you get initiation. Yeah, you get initiated. To have access with the yes, funding. Yes, yes. Now, I, I accepted to, to, to join, and I bought all that was needed. The goats and everything. The goats, yes, and mm. uh, uh, gin, dry gin and everything. And uh, the day came where... I was going to be initiated. They called How, man, how, how long were you in Nigeria? The one was with a week or two? I think it was more of two weeks, but two I've weeks. been in and out of Nigeria. Okay. Because but for this ritual? Yeah, so yeah for this year, it was about two weeks. Mm. Then uh, they, they slaughtered. You have to call your, your, your name, your, your parents' name. Mm. You are a son of so, of so and so. You have to give them your date of birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they have to do a ritual where they, they connect you with your star. That's what they said. So they end up killing a dog. A dog was sacrificed there. A or, dog? A dog, yes. Mm -hmm. A dog was sacrificed on what they, they believed. It was the god of iron, which represents the devil. Mm -hmm. There were three types of, of altars there. The god of thunder, the god of iron, and the marine, mm -hmm. the water spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, the god of thunder, it was the one that... Uh, you you just send fire you know this thing of is vuta mm. you just see fire coming out here and it it eats everything mm. that's where they they do that that's where they get they get the power there yes the power and the the god is the god of thunder the god of iron is, is they call it the devil mm. yeah now the devil is where you curse people mm. that is where where this you power, die yeah if that you is, speak anything against yes, me you die yeah so if you hear somebody saying those things yeah. and say yeah. I mean they know what they're going to do on that altar mm -hmm. that is where they sacrifice a dog mm -hmm. and they, 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 they split the blood of the dog and part of all the sacrifice you have to eat and it's mixed with, with muti you eat and uh, before you eat you, 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 you bite and you throw down and then they take from down they put it here and they put it here then you eat. I mean, you don't just eat. It is not a normal procedure. Mm. It has certain uh, uh, rules. Mm. Then from then, uh, w w when you finish that, that comes a, a, a woman who comes in into the room. Uh, they say, close your eyes. I mean, a woman comes in into the room, close your eyes. You just close your eyes and they give you water. You, you drink. That's part of the initiation. Mm. So you you don't know whether this water is part of her urine or is part of uh, uh, maybe her armpits, but you close your eyes when that woman comes. There's a woman. She does what she does. She does what she does. She gives you water to she drink. She just gives you water to drink, and you, you just have to drink that. And after eating a dog, why are you afraid of drinking water? Now? Yes, yes. So those are the procedures. Then, then, then from, okay, then there was a, a big pot where they said i will be cooked there uh they put fire it's a drum steel drum with water and you could see the steam coming out you touch the steam it's hot and they said now we're gonna put you there but before i was smeared with this muti when they put me there i could not feel the heat the water was cold literal cold 
That's what uh, happened. I stayed there for they some. They cooked you. Yeah, they cooked me. They said, now we are cooking you so that you, no bullet will enter you. You'll be strong. That's what they said. So after that, they took me out. Then after taking me out, they took a machete, you know. Mm. And that's where they did all these uh, three signs here. They cut you there. Yeah, they cut me here. And the blood that came out of here was put into the cowries. Mm. And those cowries were thrown into the water to connect me with the water spirit. Mm. And uh, they said, this is the sign of to see... Well, us. Show the people again. Maybe people might not believe it. Maybe zoom in there, gentlemen. Yeah, they said, the man actually literally... He has, uh, he has the, the sign of cut the on his hand there of the occult. He's got three cuts on his hand that yes. he got in that ceremony there. Yes. Wow. And they said, uh, with this sign, when you meet other uh, business people in South Africa, yeah. when you meet uh, pastors, if you see this sign, you must know they belong to the same cult. Mm. So when they see the sign, you greet each other with the left hand. And they said, I must uh, initiate others, also. others in South Africa because they want to have their own house here. Uh, they want to establish their own headquarters here. And uh, I asked them, how will that happen? So no, people who want power, people who want wealth, you initiate them and you get a stand, uh, a house, that will be our temple there. Mm. So that every month will be coming there. Then I came back, they gave me a, a, a head of a pig so that it will attract people. And it was smelling because of in Nigeria it's very hot. It was smelling and when it started to smell at the airport, people were not comfortable. But in Nigeria coming here, uh, it was easy. I mean, Nigerians, most of them, they take their traditional herbs, they come with them here. When we arrived at the uh, OR Tambo, uh, the pastor who took me there was able to bribe the, the officers there so that we can just pass. Mm. And we passed, we came to the church, we buried it. How did you do that? Uh, we were using a tent. So, a tent? Yeah. So it was easy to dig at night mm -hmm. just to, to bury it there. Inside the church? Yeah, inside. They said you should why bury did it. You, why, why a head of a pig now? They said the, the head of a pig is, uh, I don't know why specifically the pig, mm. but it says when, when uh, people, when it gets rotten, mm. it will be how it will attract people. Mm. So I don't know why specific a pig. Then when uh, within two months after I've buried it, Bishop, mm. I started to see people coming. You know, this, this uh, I just have to, to be, uh, uh, to tell you the truth. This thing is like you can see what you want to see, the result. It works. Yes. People were coming, Bishop. I saw people coming. But people who were coming, they were not coming to be Christians. They were not coming for the weight of God. They were attracted by something else. Yeah, they were attracted by something else. When you preach, uh, they are not there. But they, they, they don't tithe. Uh, but they are able to buy a, an oil that costs 5,000 rand. Mm. Yes, a person, she's working and her salary is 5,000 and tithe is about 500. They don't tithe, but they can buy an oil so that you, costs so 5,000. So you need to have things that you are selling. Yeah, you need to have merchandise now. Uh, starting Bengals, from, rings, stickers, yes. oils. By that time, I was just selling oils and, uh, and uh, water. different types of oils and water. Mm. And we will, we will also... Uh, go to people's house to strengthen their houses, mm. to strengthen their houses so that uh, they can continue to buy the oils. Mm. So I was not satisfied, Bishop. Then I moved to uh, Congo. I moved to Congo, that is Democratic Republic of, of Congo, and that's where I met a half human being, half crocodile. It's called Mamba Muntu. I went to an island there, mm. it's called Congolo. Mm. And when I arrived in that island, uh, it's, it's normal. Those, those people there, their level of civilization, it is not like us. Mm. I remember we, we traveled to, there's also a village of short people. The Hottentots. Yeah, you, you, short people, yes. Mm. You find them there. Mm. It's their village. We, we arrived there in that village, and once we arrived there, they cooked uh, even a monkey. They, they eat monkey there. It, mm. Not as a ritual, mm. but that, as that, food. That's part of the food. Yeah, that's part of the food. Mm. So they were so excited uh, to see us there. And it's a mountainous place. So there was this myth in, in that area that one of the caves there in that mountain, it, it, it can open up and they are able to, to receive gifts uh, like bicycle, cell phones, 
that is their mentality there gift cell phones and other things when that caves opens mm. so in that place you would hear some sound at night mm. and there's no mine but you would hear this strange sound in the mountains there on the mountains yes then we went i said no i want to see this cave we we climbed the cave we went to the cave now when you if you can enter a dark place a uh, bishop for a while mm. your eyes yeah your eyes will adjust yeah. and you'll start to see so we entered there it was dark when we entered but after some time we were able to to see each other there you understand now to them that was the sign that the spirit is welcoming us mm. now it's a, a, the 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 uh, the wall is about to open up mm. No, man, I saw these people, I said, you know what, my level of education tells me this, it won't happen. Mm. They are talking about uh, bicycles that are coming from uh, the sea with, with white people. I just thought these are missionaries. You, you know, sometimes when they see these white missionaries going there with the boat, with clothes, mm. they think they are people from the sea, mm. according to their level of education. Yeah. Because they see white people, they have never seen white people. And they tell you a story and say, uh, there are people who are coming there from the water. They give us uh, clothes, they give us cell phones. But I, uh, Bishop, when I sat down, I said, no, man. It doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen. These ones are talking about missionaries from America coming here to give to the poor. Mm. Now, they took me also to what they call the Port da Fe. It's called the door of the world, Port da Fe. They said there also, it opens up. I wanted to see these mysterious places. Now, what shocked me the most, it's, it's when uh, we went to this guy, he's called Washington. This guy, Bishop, when he consults you, he, they speak French there. They don't know English. Mm. He will take a white powder. He will throw it up. Ne? He will smear it. As a man, he starts to speak like an old woman. You see even the face, Bishop. That's what changing. I saw. He changing. The voice changing. The, 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 the posture changing. Now, this man was now starting to speak like a, a, an old woman. Ne? They said, no, wait. This man, they call, uh, is going to uh, connect with a demon called Washington. And to them, demons, they are not uh, the way we portray them. Mm. Them demons are, are powerful spirits mm. that gives them good things. Mm. They say you will call Washington. Then he called this Washington spirit. I could hear the house shaking. Goo -goo 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 -goo. The man changed. He started to speak English, American English. They said this is Washington from America. He is now going to speak with you. I spoke with the man English. Clean English. Clean English, Bishop. Then from then, all right, we went, because I was testing the houses. Mm. I, I wanted power. Mm. Went to this one. This one, he said, uh, he will call uh, the Mamba Muntu mm. from the uh, water there. Mm. They said, I must write, and I wrote in English a letter, what I want. Mm. They said, I must fold it, mm -hmm. put it under my pillow, sleep. The following day, take the letter mm. without opening it, put it inside water. When I put it inside water, I could see some, some writings appearing there. It is normal that if something is written and it's closed, once the paper is get wet, yeah. it, it will start to the show. Ink yes. starts coming out, the yeah. ink yeah, starts mm. to come out. Now, I took that thing out. Bishop, I opened it. It was a reply of what I've said, and it was written in English. And remember, I slept over it. Mm written in English, and they told me that I should bring silver coin and I should bring um, uh, some other, uh, what do you call it? You know, there are some nuts, uh, traditional nuts. Yeah. Yes, I should bring those things and I will meet the Mamba Mutu at night. Then I said, it's fine, those things I can organize. We organized, we went there at night. Uh, I thought they were playing. The men stood there in, uh, in the river and he started to speak. When he spoke from a distance, I could hear water splashing. It was at night. People in that village, they, they frequent. It was a lot of people. Everyone is doing his own things. Witches. It's like it's a village of witches. It's a marketplace. Yeah, it's a marketplace. Of power. Of power. Mm. Now, this thing is coming. The water is splashing. It's coming my way. And said, look, look. Uh, that's where fear caught me. Mm. That's where fear caught me. I said, here. Yeah. You're in the marine world now. Yeah, I'm in another world now. It came, that thing. It came. And the way the water splashing, nobody can swim like that. It's very fast. Mm. It came, it came, it came, and uh, it came and stood here. And I could hear the way it breathed. 
this is not a human being. But they gave me the, uh, uh, the picture with their weights and said it's a half human being, it's no, a no, half no. crocodile. Mm -hmm. Now it held my hand here, baptized me three times at the back, put me in the water, out, in, out. Then from then it gave me something like an egg mm -hmm. because I could not look at it. Then I said, swallow. The man was telling me, swallow. Then it did that. Then from then, it moved. It went. Then from then, I was shocked. I said, what have I seen now? Then they said, go and sleep. When I went to sleep, they gave me, you, you know, a fat cook. Mm. A fat cook uh, with uh, crushed muti. Mm. They said, eat this. Then I ate that. Then they said, sleep. When I slept, it was like a replay. I saw myself waking up, leaving my body, going to meet people now. I met people, like people were talking and said, now you are welcome. Now, I saw myself also going to the same river, doing the same thing, but I was asleep, but it was more of a replay. Mm. Now, they said, you must, they gave me a perfume. They said, when I bath, the water that I would bath with, uh, I should uh, spray that perfume and I should call Anita. The spirit that they gave me was called Anita. Mm. It's a marine uh, uh, spirit. Yeah, spirit. Then I came back. When I came back, they said I should go to the nearest river and I should introduce that Anita. If I call Anita, I should spray it in the water. Mm. Then I will tell Anita that I want all the churches here to be closed. I want my chest to grow. Every prayer, I made it by the riverside. Mm. Uh, then we, we continue. I was not satisfied with that bishop. Mm. Now I realize and say, you know what, other things they've got tricks. Mm. That's where they started to say, no, other things will teach you the tricks. The tricks where if you want to, it's called balozi. You know, there are mm. people here, they said balozi. Mm. It's like you just talk with whistling, whistling. Whistling, yeah, yeah. yes, be sure. Then they said, no, you must use balozi to prophesy to people. Mm. And uh, uh, I said, what is this balozi? But they don't call it balozi there. Mm. They just say uh, the spirit is whistling so, 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 with this thing. So, chik, chik, chik. So, 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 so. You try to hear where is this thing coming from. Now, now they gave me something like a coin, Bishop. Mm. This thing they say you put it here, mm. yeah, inside your your nose. It was so round like this. Say you put it here, then you you control your breath. Once you you breathe through your nose, uh, that uh, uh, sound will come and it will make uh, this certain sound. I tried to do it, Bishop. I remember one of my consultations, I would say to people, I'm coming. Then I'll go there and... Rabba Bulal, Rabba Bulal, looking for power. Bishop, looking for power. Time is flying, time is flying. You yes. come back from, from Congo. Yes. So you bathed the, saw the half moon to half crocodile story. Yes, Bishop. Drank what you had to drink, eat what you had to eat. Yes. And uh, you came back, and what happened after that? Then, 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 when I came back, Bishop, uh, people were, were coming, uh, looking for uh, success. I will sell them the oils. Then one day, as I, I was seated there, uh, three policemen came. They said, we are looking for Mercado. Then I said, it's me. Because people were coming for consultation from 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And uh, I will stop consulting around 12 o'clock. Now, night. Yeah, at night. It was, it, it was a queue of people. And uh, police came and said, we are looking for Mercado. I said, yeah, I am. I said, no, we, you are under arrest because of mutilation case mm -hmm. dealing with human body parts. You need to move very fast. We have five minutes left. All right, so, yes. We have not even started doing your books. So yes, yes. summarize the whole story, yes. your prison story, coming out your repentance, yes. and let's uh, do some adverts. We might have to call you for another day and yes. we, yes. we redo some other issues. Here. Yes, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Now, I went to prison, then I, I knew that uh, I was not involved. Then they, uh, they, they acquitted me from the case. Mm -hmm. Then while I was in prison, I said, you know what, I need God to give me a second chance. Mm -hmm. I prayed, I accepted Jesus on my coming out. I went home, I confessed. I took all these things, I burned them. And I wrote a letter to the Apostolic Faith Mission where I said, you know what, I need to be re reinstated. They said, before you can be reinstated, you have to go and serve. I stayed, I served, and after serving, I was reordained. And there was a church in Sibukeng, Apostolic Faith Mission. They were looking for a pastor. I submitted my CV. Then I was, I was chosen to be the, the, the presiding pastor there. So that's the story of my life. Mm. Yes. And from then, I think the rest of the stories that you are hearing about, he has uh, put together uh, two very interesting books. I've, I've read this one here, uh, The Church Mafia Captured by the Powers, An Untold African Narrative. 
by uh, Dr. Makado himself, Rabulani, and one of his latest books that he has done, I think it's on Amazon, mm -hmm. you can also get it initiated uh, by the spiritual fathers. You get to know how the heads of pigs and yes. uh, you know, manipulation of people as far as uh, his, uh, his experience has, has led him, mm -hmm. that how pastors are actually looking for power and going in all these weird places uh, looking for that, uh, that uh, you know, power to control people. And from his arrest now, I think after his rehabilitation, He's now pastoring. Uh, where are you pastoring now? I'm pastoring in Apostolic Faith Mission, mm. Life Overflow in Subuke and Zone 10. He's in Zone 10, uh, yeah. I got a small little stick for you here. I hope it doesn't look like another witchcraft again, <laughs> since we've already seen lots of these things in your life. But I've made, I made this one myself. Okay. So, but I've divided it into three sections here, the past, the present, and the future. And on it, since you are a theologian, yes. I'll call the first ring here the Apostolic Church the initial place where religion started. Yes. How was the church then? The second level would be the church of, uh, the church of Rome. Mm. How did Christianity move into Rome? And what happened in the times of Rome? Mm. Then the third level here is the church of Europe, the times of reformation. Mm. How the reformers, Martin Luther, Zwingli, Calvin, Methodist church, and etc. Mm. Finally, it is the church of the Americans and the missionaries that comes to Africa. Mm. So while you are processing your theology, you want to look back again in terms of history, what was happening, what is happening, and what will happen. And using this again as a thinking tool, the Westerners, the Northerners, the Easterners, and the Africans. So it's a thinking tool. I use this quite often when I'm processing ideas. Then I'm, ab I'm able to think globally, and I could act locally. So I actually use this stick. If I want to use it for geographical purposes, I can use it for health issues, diet issues. I can use it for fashion. I can use it for marriages and weddings. How are they getting married here? How are they getting married here? How are they getting married here? How were they getting married in the past? How are they marrying now? How are they marrying in the future? How did they used to make money in the past? How are they making money now? And the issue of spirits and the issues of miracles. And so, so slowly I use, I use an object so that I can process lots of thinking. And since you honored us to be part of this guest, I will give you that as a gift. And you can, you can have it to yourself and hang it somewhere in your house and use it as a thinking tool. Thank you. And over and above that, we have all these books, we have all these books mm. that he has uh, designed and written that he wanted to share. What's your final word to the greater Christian community there, the pastors, the laymen, and the greater Christian community? Bishop, my final word will, uh, to the body of Christ is that we need to connect with the real Christ, mm. Christ as a spirit, Christ as the one who have died for us, because a lot of churches, they are preaching a different kind of Christ. Mm. We, we've got cult, we've got occultism. Mm. So read your Bible, pray, and that is where you'll find Christ, in your Bible. Okay. Amen. We will come back again with uh, Dr. Rabulani, and we could pick up his brain again and see how his uh, testimony has actually led him to the uh, Human Rights Commission here yes. in South Africa where he has been called in as a witness on a number of uh, cases that are breeding on the ground as the government of South Africa is uh, battling to understand the issue of the church, the Christian church in particular, and the occultism. I didn't have enough time to grill him about this Jesus story mm -hmm. or grill him about uh, the, the benefits, what did he do with some of the things. He banned them, he destroyed them, he repented, he has confessed, he's putting his life back in order again. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice to hear from his wife nice to hear from his children and some of the friends that he has known around as to what can they testify mm. as to the testimony that he has given us. But for tonight, it was an honor and indeed a blessing for us to have you on the show uh, here to share with us your greater books. Where can people find you if people are looking for you? Uh, I'm available on social media. It's uh, Makado S. Ramabulana. That is our Facebook page. Uh, can I give my number? Out? Yes, you can. Yes. My numbers are 0727 for South Africa. 977-9568. 9568. Yes. One word for the young pastors. Young pastors. I will say to all the young pastors, let us be patient. If God has really called you, let us not do shortcut. Let us preach the true Christ. And let us not chase uh, success. Wow. You heard it from the host's mouth. I didn't interrupt him much. I uh, thought I'd give him a chance so that he can explain himself. I'll talk to my team here. We can maybe reschedule another conversation and I could uh, possibly grill him and uh, he can take us through slowly some yes. of these stories that he is telling us here, his testimony and his experience at the hands of the occult. But it is a reality that the Christian church has to start facing up with. My one question and one comment would be if pastors, if some of the pastors are going out there and looking for mutis and rituals to be powerful, to be strong and attract money, 
then why are pastors telling members not also to go out there mm. and get power also to make money? Because if pastors are having access mm. to the occult to make money, why then do you stop your members from also having access mm. to the same sources so that they can also have money? But the reality is that the Christian church, as we have it today, can no longer be the same Christian church yeah. that was experienced at Pentecost. Yeah. Lots of things have happened between Pentecost yeah. and Rome yeah. and Europe and America. Mm. By the time we're talking about the Christian community, mm. we needed to find out that amongst the wheat, mm. the tares mm. are here also. Mm. I leave that to yourself. Mm. Think what you want. Mm. Make a decision. F information is powerful. Mm. Your host, Maponga J. Chigaramboko, Garama Shamba Uda Chirea Na Wanewe Wanji. Mokumbe Mwana Musendewe Shano. Chiswana Chigarama Uwe Matanda Ano Ura Chibwe Chitiza Chinutezi Wa Rukuru Wa Pedu Ano Tambana Chum Tambo Riparo Wa Rechira Mba Kusesara Mpana Ngo Kubwane Macha Kumagarwa Chiri Mangora Naba Fuli Vaya Uira Miti Ya Sose Magumba Mwana Mwesendewe Shano Wa Naiswe Mfora Until You See You Again Don't Do What I Wouldn't Do If You Decide To Do It Do It Better